Well, good afternoon. We're going to get started because A, it's a beautiful day out. And um, we, the sooner we get started, if we get done, you can enjoy the sun. All right? Um, I can enjoy the sun because it's snowing at home. So, uh, Michigan. Uh, so, um, yeah, it, it's icing there last night and snow today. How awesome is that? All right. Uh, this is just because we're small. I know this, that does not say that right there, but the, it, this is the talk that we're having. I do have handouts. If, you, if we don't have it, if you don't have it, um, you, um, this QR code right here, this is my contact information. If you want to uh, get that, I can actually email it to you. Just send me an email. I can, stu- I can email this also to you if you, if you would like. Um, so, but that is my contact information. If, if you would like it, I can always throw it back up there a little bit later. Okay? Uh, Just, come on. There we go. Just a little bit about me. Um, uh, I'm married. My wife, Christy, uh, uh, the picture on my right, your right, left, right? Um, She, uh, you know, she's a teacher at Lutheran High School Northwest. Um, We've been married 27 years. And, um, um, been you know kind of going through a lot. I started out as a teacher, um, taught high school for 15 years. Again, took a call, got tired of the bell, you know the Pavlov thing. Um, got very tired of the bell, and then went into uh, worship leading. Um, I was actually a music major coming out of college, um, and so then went into worship leading, um, and then through all, all, everything, ended up doing some youth work um, on top of all that, um, and then going on to seminary and becoming a pastor. She has walked with me through the whole thing um, and has put up with me going through life changes. All right. Um, so I, she's, she's the rock. She's, she's amazing. Um, and, and not only that, she's the mother of our children, obviously. Um, the first one is Jacqueline. She's a, a PT major. Um, and in her grad school work, she will end here in a year and a half with, be, by being called doctor. <sighs> Yeah, um, so that will be happening soon. Uh, the young man in the middle, that is my youngest. It's my son, Joey. He's a sophomore, um, and he is now doing um, some uh, um, internship with DOZ, which is a accounting firm in Indianapolis. He's finishing up his internship with them, and um, he was all excited because it be mid-January. He sent me a text saying, hey, guess how much I made? (laughs) Yeah. More than me. All right. Okay. Um, And then my my other daughter there, that's that's Rebecca, or we call her Becca, uh, and that's Becca's dog, Palmer. Um, So I have a grand dog. Um, but Becca is a, going to be graduating in May in a golf management major, and she just signed, exciting news, texted me yesterday, she just signed a contract to work at, as an assistant pro at Coyote Creek Golf Course in Fort Wayne. So um, I am excited because soon they're going to be off my payroll. <laughs> Uh, uh, but they're, they're a great family. They've walked with me through, also through all this, and, um, and, and, and we have a good time. We laugh a lot. Um, we just enjoy life. I want to talk to you, though, here about, about churches and, and this whole idea of being small. Okay, so the, the idea of why this has become something really passionate for me is, is number one, is, is the focus on the church ministries. And, and when I look at the church ministry, when I look at the current congregation that I serve, like I, I, I see that the ideas and the practices that they had prior weren't bad. They, were, they weren't bad at all. In fact, it, it was, they were amazing things when it came down to that time period. And, and, and so when, when, you, when I look at that and when people talk about that, I say, yes, those were amazing things. I, I, I compliment them on it. We, we celebrate this. We do a lot of celebrations in our church. When people share things uh, about past that were great, we celebrate. Because those were good when it fit the needs of that time, right? Because I know when it, they, they did those things, that was the best answer to the challenges at that time. And, and that's where we get caught because many times these ideas and strategies become habit. You know that. 
It, it's, it's no offense to all the pastors. and, and the, you, It's church services sometimes. We do it because we've always done it. And, and I know I'm not the most popular pastor in, in certain things. Like I took out certain things of the service so that they would start missing it so I can explain why we do it. So it didn't just become rote. It just didn't become something that we've always done. It, 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 it makes sense. Then it becomes meaningful. And so there's, there's no change or um, it, there's no change or attempt to change. Then there's really no desire to change. When we get caught in habit, everything just becomes there. Right? And, and that's where the small churches, we get into those statements where we say, well, we can't do that. Oh, pastor, look at us. Pastor, we're old. I get that. Right? And some of you, you laugh because you might be the one saying that. <laughs> right? And so we have it. So my, my thought, my thought, whole thought process for all churches is we need to face our challenges for the sake of the gospel. And, and, and this, is, uh, this is something that I'm very passionate about. You get off being the, 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 the church on the corner. Get, get going on being the church that's going to share the gospel. Right? Because the, the ministry, the, the opportunity for ministry is so great. I don't know about your context. And so I'm sharing this in, in kind of in my context, trying to make it broad enough so that you can take it, maybe take ideas or you can say, hey, that makes sense, you know, and then look at, at how your church is working. You have to understand the stuff that I'm going to share with you today, I purposely went through with my congregation for two years. And we're now starting our strategic plan. It, we did this on purpose uh, be, because they were so caught up in, in, in this that they were so uncomfortable that they didn't want to do anything. And so I had to teach them how to be uncomfortable and why it's okay to be uncomfortable. So it, it, we're going to face the challenges for the sake of the gospel. Yes, we're going to be uncomfortable. But if it enhances the gospel message to those in, in the church and in the community, then we need to consider the road less traveled. So, sermon series. I did sermon series, purposefully sermon series. I did Bible studies on purpose. Um, our, 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 our meetings in my, with my church council, certain things we, we talked about in those meetings were done on purpose for two years to get us to this point today. Right? So, it, it, it's, it has not been an, an easy walk. I've had people leave the church through this process and that's okay but I've had people come to the church through this process I've had people come back to the church through this process which is absolutely awesome our, our church went through a, a time period we were where they were at one time uh, uh, probably about uh, I'm going to say I'm going to guess seven eight years ago they they were worshiping anywhere between 350 to 400 Okay, in, in our area, we have the largest LCMS, one of the largest LCMS congregations five miles from us. People drive to that church past our church. Right? They, they, they have five services. They worship uh, roughly um, over, over 2,000 people a weekend. And, and on holidays, I mean, at Christmas, like it booms. Right? So we, we have that happening around us. Right? But we were still worshiping 350 to 400. Right? When I got called in, when, when I was called to, to, to do this, to, to take on this challenge, they were down to 40. Okay? Um, 40 in the, in the, no offense, the medium age, the average age of our congregation at that time was 72. So we had a lot of work to do. Right? And we worked together. So our struggle, and you can, if you want to say something, just say it. This is best practices. I, 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 I work very hard through this with, with my congregation, but maybe you have something that you can share uh, and, or have ideas that you want, you, you, you can, that would just enhance everybody. Um, I am going to try to keep it on, on the right time. I do have my, my Apple Watch timer running to make sure that we end on time, but also to allow time for questions. So our, our struggle is, is changing the mindset. We have to get off this one size doesn't fit all. 
One size does not, or we have to get on that. I mean, one size does not fit all. You look at the, the church down the road. Church size is important for planning. Like I said, five miles down the road is the, one of the largest churches in the LCMS. Right? They have, um, they have a, a school double graded. They have three pastors, right? two DCEs, two music people. I, um, just, they, they, have, they have special needs teachers. Uh, they, they have it all. Right? If we would look at them and say, well, oh, that's our vision, we're never going to get anywhere. And, and so I, we actually had to put on some blinders so that we're not looking at them. Uh, we, we aren't them. We will never be them. Right? You cannot lead a small church. This is, I think, some of our biggest problems. And I'll be very 100% very honest with you. I always felt opposite until I got into a small church. You can't lead a small church like you do a large church. I have visions. I want a youth group. I want a Sunday school program that is flourishing. Right? I, I, would, I would love to have VBS. We don't have any of those. We, we can't. We don't have the volunteers. We don't have, we, we don't, we don't have the, the, the space. Right? So what does that mean? Is that we look at our church in a little different way and we start trying to find where are we gifted at. And then we stop looking at churches around us and stop thinking that we can be just like them. Right? Don't tell me, well, that church down the road, church Y down the road, well, you should see their youth group program. Yeah, that church down the road, they, they, they do. They, they have three youth group programs. They also have two DCEs running them. Right? Their confirmation program has 62 kids this year, I think. I have two. But that's successful because last year I had... Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so God is good if, if I focus in a different way. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm having problems getting my thing to work. I'll just go this way. Okay, so this one, soul, one size fit all mentality, we've got to change. We've got to get, get away from this. Like I said, you, you, you can't lead a, a small church like you would a large, large church. So our church, my church is Crown of Life Lutheran Church. We, we are based uh, in Rochester Hills, Michigan. We're on top of a hill. We're actually, uh, I give us credit because we are the highest church. <laughs> we are the highest point of Rochester. Michigan. That's, that's where our church stands, so it's amazing. But we are based in this. We are a small church. We, we, when I came in, we did a study about what is important to people. What is important to my congregation, to these people. By the way, just so you know, I was ordained and installed. I, I've only been a pastor r roughly three years. I was ordained and installed on, on March 15th uh, of, of, I think three years ago, of March 15th. March 16th, our state shut down. Right? COVID was awesome. Because a lot of the things you're seeing, we changed during COVID. When people weren't there. Because we could. So, I, 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 it, 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 it sounds weird, but we could. And when people came back, they were so desperate for church that they didn't care. A lot of these things they didn't care, right? And, and they, some of them, they, they had no idea. Like in, in a minute, I'm going to show you our mission statement. I changed it over COVID. Two words. They had no clue. Because they were never invested in the church. They went to church, but they were never invested in the church. I, and so we, we went. So we, we did a study and we found out that they love to be with each other. All right? When you're at 40 people, guess what? You know everybody's business. Everything. You knew about the grandchildren, the great grandchildren. You knew when they were going on vacation. You knew how much they made. You knew how many, um, how many homes they have in Florida. What cars they drove. What did they like to eat? When do they go out for dinner? Oh, you knew. And if they weren't at church, somebody knew why, and they told you. 
So we were basically at what we call a relational orientation. We were family. We were kinship. It was like a major, every Sunday, a family reunion. All right? And so when you think about this, this whole idea of family reunion, um, guess what? You bring in outsiders, and they don't fit in. You know what it's like you, when you were dating or engaged and you started going to the other person's family. At first, you didn't always fit in. It took time to fit into that mold. Uh, that's what was the problem with us. So we had to change this mentality of this family reunion because you can't lead a small church like that because one size doesn't fit all. We had to get rid of then this large church mentality because we're family. They ran everything and, and, and they did. So we had 40 people and seven boards. <laughs> seven. <laughs> All right? 40 people, seven boards. Guess what? The entire church was not active. They had boards of one. <laughs> and several people filled those boards of. We had a lady who was on four boards of. <laughs> that, think of we had seven boards, and one lady ran four of them by herself. So we had lots of boards. We, we actually had, at this time, and not anymore, but we had classrooms set aside, empty rooms set aside for certain ministries. We had a youth room. How many youth did we have? We had a pool table in this youth room. Major, by the way, it is for sale. Um, we have this pool table in this empty youth room because they kept saying, well, we used to have a youth group when they had 400 people. You know, what happens if the 400 come back? <laughs> okay? <laughs> or, or we get this thing, this thing, well, we need this because someday, right? Or that church has, someday we will have. And, 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 and so this whole mindset mentality, that this, this, because, because as a family, you start, you, you know what it's like. You're, you, as family, you start looking at other families, and then you start saying, well, we've got to be like that family. And, and, and it's that large church mentality that, that we were living in, because they, they were still living in a 400-person church mentality with 40 people. Right? And then they couldn't figure out, A, why people wouldn't come. We would have guests, but they would never come back. We'd only have one, you know, the one-time wonders, right? Or if they would come back the second time, why did they never come back or, or why did they leave instantly? Why wouldn't these, these guests come and join them in time of fellowship? Well, it's because they had five round tables set up. And, and you know what happens at a round table? They all just sit there and and their backs and, and, and no one knows or, or notices. So we, we, we had some of, the, of these struggles. Okay, we, we came in, when I came in and I started talking about words like change and, and the words like creativity, um, it was a battle. They were angry at me, right? They, they can't imagine doing things differently. So we were challenging them. And the challenge, the, my challenge to them was we were going to attempt to do things for, for, for God, not for us. And so our, our goal is to do our share to build God's kingdom. Right? Which means that in order to do that, we actually had to go back in history. As a church, we have to work at small churches. You tend to only celebrate what? Successful ministries, right? So we went back and we looked at the church at different stages at different times. I am the fifth pastor at this church. Uh, the pastor before me, he was a, a interim. The pastor before him, they released after three years. The pastor before him was when the church all of a sudden went through the 400 down to the 40. Okay, so we, we actually went back into our histories and started looking at. We looked at the pendulum that Crown of Life went through, that, that shift from, from one thing and, and that. And then we, we really started talking. So then they, when they started saying, this was our history, and then I said, well, why did you call me? And they said, well, we wanted a leader. I said, then step back 
and we're going to lead. I didn't say I was. We're going to lead. Right? So they were looking for this leadership, someone to come in, and, and I had to convince them, number one, that change is inevitable, growth is intentional. Because in their mind, it's completely reversed. I'm, I'm jumping through this. For those of you that do not, I do have copies of this. I will email them to you. I will get your information and I can send this all to you. So if you want to take pictures of every slide, you can. And I have more picture slides than I have time. I purposely do that. Um, so don't freak out if I don't get to them all. Okay? Whoops. Ah, there we go. Okay, I missed one. Okay, we do have to push them through change. This is, the, and this is key in small churches, when we start looking at where our ministries are and, and, and stuff, listen to the language that you use. This is, this is a learning curve even on my part. I had to learn through, to work through this language issue because what, what happens is we, we start talking uh, about, well, we're, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. I'm the pastor. We're going to do this. And, and that, that's great. But if they don't want to do it, it's like taking a dog for a walk that doesn't want to go. You can't pull them through. So being pulled, they, 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 I, in their minds, the reason why they re removed the pastor be, to before me is because he was trying to pull them. And they were being that, that dog that doesn't want to go for a walk. Right? And, and then you bring in this, this other interim who started trying to get them to do things, but all it was was this. Our board meets every... Well, it did. Not anymore, because I stopped that. Our board met every, every month. Okay? Every month. For two, two and a half, maybe three hours. Okay? Everybody, everybody got, every other board got to do a report. We ended that very quickly. Because um, now we only have one board. And that's our council. Right? But, but here, oh, we, we had a lot of talk. Wouldn't it be nice if someday we will have this? That church down the road has, ooh, someday we're going to have that. They spent a lot of time talking that. My first three meetings. My first three meetings, about 60% of the meeting was that. The fourth meeting, I had a jar. It's called the dollar jar. Anytime you say, well, someday, you know, the church down the road has, you put a dollar in. Right? And I'm going to tell you, we've, ha we've had great bar nights. Right? <laughs> Right? Because we had to change the mentality, change the way we talk, change the way we think. So we stopped talking about change. And this, and this has been an intentional work that we have been doing, it, it, two years in the making. And so now we're, we're actually implementing it. We've implemented changes slowly through the whole process. We're going to do something new. We're going to enhance the, and enhance what's already in place. Uh, you don't have to, to completely destroy everything. Look at what you've got and enhance it. Okay? I'll, I'll explain it in a little bit. There's, and there's nothing that does not need change. Something can change. Everything's going to change somewhere along the way. Look at your congregation. Look at the difference of numbers, even. Everything changes. Okay, this Sunday, the, the altar pyramids change, right? Yeah, you know, you went from green to white, and then next week it goes to purple. Yeah, change, right? Okay, and just so you know, I actually removed altar pyramids for four months. They didn't get it. They didn't understand them. So actually, so now every time we put up a new season, like a new pyramid, we talk about what it is. We still do. E even though we've done it now a, a whole year cycle, we, we're still doing that. Be because that way it becomes an idea that, yeah, it, there's a change, right? But it, it's not something that's destroying them. It's actually enhancing what's already there. Okay? I already did that. Okay? Um, so... 
Some of the biggest problems that we have, this is how we made our changes, okay? And this is how our church has actually grown, okay? We're, we're up, basically, if you, if you take the numbers, we're over, we had uh, over 100% growth, okay? In, in two and a half years. We, we have that, and, and this is not a brag on me, this is, this is God at work, right? We're up. The fact, in fact, in in January alone, we welcomed 22 new members. 22 new members. Um, we we brought in three families, three preschool families. We had none. We had a full preschool with no families in our congregation, right? But 50% of our preschool families were not affiliated with a church. So we, we've we've done things intentionally um, to to create an environment. But it, we we've made these changes, and we started with this: quit thinking big. We started with that. Right? So the first step that we did is we looked at what are some minor changes. What are some of those small modifications that you can make in a church? Um, our church was orange. When they built the church, orange was the color. <laughs> the orange is peachy. <laughs> right? It wasn't welcoming. In fact, it was kind of annoying. It was, it was, it, it, it just, it, they, they had that on the walls. They had kind of a brownish tinge of tile. And then we had we have wood chairs with red um, backing and, and um, comfort thing. Okay, orange it just bleh, nothing stood out. So the, the one change we did, I mean, so we painted the church. Right, we have two different colors in, in our church. You can't tell unless you really look at it. it. Depends how the light hits. Did that on purpose. But now we're we're kind of this bluish gray. And you know what? The comment for all these guests that have been visiting our our, our church, they they talk about how warm it feels when you walk in, right? Because our front wall, right where the altar is, is white. Everything else is this grayish blue. And yes, you stand there and you look at the back wall, kind of this grayish blue back wall. You know what that does to the red? Oh my. Gosh, it's so beautiful. Right? And I've had them stand up there and look. Because it, it, it changed. So minor change. New setup. Uh, just a, a new setup. Music people, organists, if you don't have a balcony, which we don't, they, our, our organist was way back, almost in the back of the church by the soundboard. Right? But they're supposed to be leading. So... It's nice because it's, it's an electric organ, and we had a lot of cord all wound up that went to the speaker. So we moved the organ up to the front, so now people can actually see the organist. So the organist now leads our hymns by you know, when they want to sing, because, you know, the big thing, you know, everyone knows, right? We, we've, we've moved away from churchy language. Churchy, do you know what I mean by churchy language? Army? Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't have a narthex. We have a gathering place. Okay. We we don't we don't have um, you know donuts and coffee hour. It, it's 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 community. Right. So we, we're we're kind of thinking, we don't call it a youth room. It's now our children's church. It, we we've revamped things. So we we're, we're moving away from some certain. Ch- churchy language. We, we've done this too. We're in step two. Uh, in step two, then, then we make major changes. We, people develop a new perspective and act in new ways. And, and so we, oh my goodness, we put up guest parking signs. You would have thought that was like the end of the world. Because now the, some of them had to park two spots away from the normal spots. So but, but, yeah, they only get mad for, like, one weekend, right? But newcomers come as honored guests rather than visitors. So that's the kind of some of our major change. We change the way we treat people when they come in. We now have visitors, you know, welcome people, uh, greeters, we, you know, that open the door when, when people come. But members are not members. They're always opening the door. Are we, we've tra- trained our, our quote usher. We don't have elders. We have ushers. We, we've changed our uh, trained our ushers that their job is when a, when a, a guest walks in is that they welcome them, find out their name, and they record. Don't give them a card, you know. But they, they ask them questions. They they ask story. They want to know the story. So they find out their name. They find out where they're from. Quote address. Hey. Um, okay. Um, 
And, and then we don't ask for email or phone number yet because if I have their address, I can send them a personalized card on Monday. Right? So I got name and address, and then they always ask, well, you know, why are you here? What brought you here? You know, um, what can we do to, to be, or, or what can we be praying for? All right. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to grab a drink of water here in a minute. But, but what happens is, is what we found out now, people tell them the story, and now they're starting to remember who they are. So the second time they come back, we're calling them by name. It's not like, hey, you were here before. Now it's name. So we've, we've done some major change in that, in, in, in purposefully training what we're doing and why we're doing it. Moving on to, this is where we're, we're part of our strategic plan movement, is now we're working on what we call transformational change. Modification of belief and practices. Instead of inward focusing on believers, we're going to have an outward focus on the lost. Yes, we're still going to care for those that are members, but we're going to also care for those that are outsiders. When you think of the church in Rome, Paul pleaded for the, the people, Paul pleaded for that church in Rome to, to care for the Gentiles. He pleaded for them to do that. It's, it's the same way. Right? Members think because they have the title member, they get everything. And this was, this is, this was a hard thing. Because when our preschoolers would sing, 50% were not members, or 50% had no church affiliation. And they would sit up front because they wanted to see the kids and take pictures and because it's cute. Our people sit in the back and then they get upset because th those people are squirrely. They get up. They're moving around. They, they, they don't behave churchy. And when they complain to me about it, I said, then you sit up front. <laughs> okay? But I also remind them, that's our mission field. Right there. It, it, they only sing four times, four, four times a year. So we have four times that you guys can wor work on the mission field. It's, it's this change of, of, of focus. Yeah, quit, quit making it about you. Whose church really is it? It's God's church. We just get the honor of being part of it. Right? So it's this modification. So this is what we're on. This is how we're, we've actually grown through all this. And, and I'm going to be very honest with you. Again, this is, these are things that we are doing. Please do not take this and say, Oh, yeah, we're because I don't know your context, right? Number one, we look for teachable moments, okay? In, in Galatians 6.10, it says, so then we have an opportunity to let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So we want to find those teachable moments. We want to teach. We want them to grow. We don't just want people to come to church and leave. We want them to be taught, Maybe it's a behavior. Maybe it's scripture. Um, we want them to be taught in some way, somehow. Right? So we look for those teachable moments. I look for these teachable moments, not so much uh, about our guests, but for our own members. Right? A few years ago, we had this thing called a presidential election. Right? I don't know about your church, but I know where my church stands. Right? And they're very adamant about it. And my, my person that, that um, was, was at that time was in doing our, our spiritual care team said, Pastor, you know where I stand politically. <laughs> yeah. Well, if someone ever tells me opposite of, of where I believe, I'm going to tell them they're wrong. <laughs> and I said, okay. He goes, you want to know why? No, but okay. He, and, and, he, and he tells me, because that's the truth, and the truth may hurt. I said, you can do that in church? He goes, yeah. So I said, I'll call him George. George, you do that, and I will not commune you. And I said, and that's the truth, and the truth may hurt. <laughs> okay? George did not leave the church. 
but it was a teachable moment. Because the, then we got the opportunity then to talk about what it truly means to love someone. Uh, you know, they, they don't have to uh, believe in the same thing as, as you, but, but, you know, we have teachable moments. Right? We want to envision a preferable future for the church. We have just finished this um, in about uh, May of last year. We walk through. We actually walk through a plan of envisioning our church. If and, and I put church name because you guys can can do this with your church. Uh, we did. If Crown of Life could be all that God wanted it to be in five years, what would it look like? Okay. Now this is very hard because you know when you start thinking this, you start thinking personal. What do I want it to look like? Because then we made them share it. Right? So I sent this out a week before our meeting, and I said, you better have it written down. It has to be in writing, but you will share it, but it has to be in writing because I collected them with their names on it. My former teacher, right? Hey? And, and it was always, they always use this. I want. I want. Well, I envision it as. I want the church to be this way. I want the church to go this route. I want I, 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 I. Okay? So we now have a second jar. Uh, you laugh, but it has changed the way we talk in our, in our council meetings. Right? If this is not about what I want. You can have an opinion, but what does God want? So our language now is focusing on, on visioning of God, okay? What does God want, right? But in order to make this happen, and this is, this is the hard part. This was very hard for our congregation, uh, for, for my council to even get, understand, is that we're not going to talk about this until we're doing that. So I did a sermon series on prayer. And I taught them, just my counsel then, even in a separate Bible study, on how to pray. Right? So now, I, I do not open the counsel in prayer. I do not close the counsel in prayer anymore. They do it. We do not do it in our little room with the table. We get up and we go into church. We open and close in front of the altar. Together. Right? We, we are really working on changing our, our vision, our focus, to get away from us and get on what God. Even though we know our meetings, there's going to be some of those things, you know, numbers, people, budgets, you know, building. You know, what we will talk about that. But we always want to be changing our, our, our focus this is where we found as a small church, if we're in that, we're doing great things. Right? And it might be great things for you and you, it might happen, it might just be great things for your 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 20, 30, whatever your number is. Right? But we have found because we have we have done this for our our, our in our context in what we're doing, we have found that it has now helped us treat our guests with love and in fact our returning guests percentage is 97 percent it that completely changed in two and a half years because we spent a lot of time that and we actually pray for them by name in our council meeting so we really changed concepts ideas Bold prayer, because we can pray. Okay. When, when I say pray boldly, is we're just going to say it like it is. If, if we're hurt, in, in Romans 12, it talks, we rejoice, we rejoice, and we all rejoice, basically rejoice together. If someone weeps, we're going to weep together. So it's bold. If someone's hurting, we're, we're going to all hurt together. And we're going to pray boldly for them. You know, you know because it, you, you, it's kind of like you, when, I, when I taught religion in high school, it was, I want to pray for that person because they think they, they're so all that and blah, 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 blah. Or I want to pray that I get an A in the test that I didn't study for. You know, it, the superficial prayer, I want them to pray boldly. So I, 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 we always talk about bold prayer. Make sense? Okay. 
Um, vision, uh, then, uh, division to accomplish the mission statement or the purpose statement. So now that we're, we're really working on this, that this is now we're in this phase. So we are now taking everything. This is our new, this is our new mission statement. Right? It's, it's very typical. Right? <laughs> Let me tell you the change. <laughs> we changed to connecting people. Words before it used to be joyfully introducing people. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It sounds good, doesn't it? But think about what that really, really means in context. If I joyfully introduce you to someone, your name is? Tina. Tina, and your name is? Darlene. Darlene. Darlene, this is Tina. Have a great one. I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, oh, Darlene, Tina, she's awesome. Have a great one. I'm done. I joyfully introduced. Now, if I joyfully introduce, all I have to do is say, that's Jesus. I'm done. Right? So now we changed our mindset, changed it because of the wording, and we went to connecting people. Because if I'm going to really connect, if I want Darlene and Tina to connect, I've got to make sure that they connect. They, they're going to talk. They're going to be together. They're going to understand each other. They're going to grow together. They, you know, they're going to, like, oh my gosh, in five years, I, I, look how you've grown! And, and, and all that stuff. Right? We, we want to teach them to connect. So we're going to connecting people to Christ, uh, the, the source of life. That is our new mission statement. Okay? And so everything that we do now, and this is where, this is like in our growth process and growing our small church. And again, it's not just bringing in numbers. I know we talk a lot about people. We're successful when we have people. I have, in our church right, right now, we have um, 197 chairs. Right? In, in the church. That's all the chairs we have. 197 wooden chairs with this beautiful red stuff on that, that looks absolutely stunning now. Okay? We have 197 of them. Right? On a, on a, we have two services. Right? And I'm not going back. We, you know, we, we're at two services because, you know, when we came back from COVID, we had to spread out. So, um, so we purposely did that. Right? We're, but we're not going back. But, but, so I might only have 20, 25 at, at, at our traditional service at 9. But, but, but now at, at our 1030 service, kind of our modern service, I don't use contemporary. I hate that word. I'll be honest with you. cannot stand it. Okay? Uh, so we use modern. Okay? But, but at our modern service, like, we're, we're worshiping 78, 90, you know, on a given Sunday. So, I mean, we've had 100% growth. I, I walked in at 40. It is how awesome. I mean, and, and, and then we, we were, we're welcoming new members. And in fact, in, in two weeks, I'm, I'm, we're welcoming another family coming in. Um, and, and the only reason I'm, we're going to welcome them is because I'm going to marry them in, in, in December. Um, you know, uh, the divorce, divorce, but I'm marrying them in December. And they have children of their own on each side, but they want to come and they want to make church something a priority. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all good stuff. You told me to speak out if I want to speak yep. out. Yep. Um, what's your new member process look like? You sit down with me and we talk. I don't do a new member class. Most of our people are, are um, transfers anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If they're not transfer, I usually I sit down with them probably about three times maybe, okay. kind of go through things. Um, all new members, though, if, if you're not a transferring from an LCMS congregation, um, you do go through an adult confirmation thing. So I have a one-year co adult confirmation program. Okay. So, yep. Um, so we're looking at transformational change, helping people of Crown of Life gain ownership. In other words, th th this is their church. So any guests that walk in, anything that happens, we want them to do it. People need to see the need for change, not just talk about it, but actually doing it. So it, and this is the phrase that I use. Is it's, accompanying Jesus is, much is a much different thing than discipleship. We spend so much time accompanying Jesus and then expect Jesus to do all the work. It's it, um, well, Greg Finke, right? You're joining Jesus. Yeah, we're joining him. But if you read his books, it's not just saying that Jesus is doing the work, right? It's us. 
Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing, yeah. So accompanying Jesus is a much different thing. So we want them to gain ownership, but we also want them to understand what does it truly mean to be a disciple and how do we change, how do we grow as a church, how do we work together as a church um, through, the, through, the, through this whole process, right? So we, we sat down and we did uh, um, an inventory of everything we've ever done. And the list is great, which is fine. But we, then we, did, we took and we looked at the list of things, that we, everything we've ever done, and we, we broke it down. Oh, necessary, not necessary. And, and we even talked visual. Where is God leading us? Do, do you think God is taking us back to having a youth group? Right? And, and, and so if God is really leading us back to having a youth group, how does that look like in, in, the, in the vision of the plan? Right? And so we're going to determine the activities necessary to actualize the vision. So we're going to prioritize action and we're going to see, make sure that something is happening. And so we did. We prioritized everything that we did and we put it into three categories. Right? And, and then and, and in the love God, in the love people, and connect. So this is the order we're doing things. We are not going to try to do, to try, in order to, 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 to help a church stay together, help a church grow, help a church make an impact in, in, in whatever what we find our niche, we're not going to try to do too many things at one time. Remember, we started at how many? Forty. And you know what it's still like? Even, even though our church is growing, still 20% of the people are doing 8% of the work. And the pastor is doing the rest of the 20%. Right? Plus the fact I don't have a staff. I, I have a, a preschool director who's full-time. I have a secretary who, who is three-quarters time. I have a business director who works 10 hours a week, just you know, basically offering and stuff like that, and, and membership stuff. And, and then we have a, a teacher aide. That's my staff. Right? I don't have a music person. I actually hire in, in someone every week to come in and play. I have a rotation of five. They come in and play our, our nine. I'm actually a worship leader. I'm a music major. I actually was a worship leader. And so guess who does the ten? Plays the music. Plays the music. Yeah, so the 1030 is my show. Yeah, you know, just, you know, but, but, you know, but it's, it's at this point, that's where we're at. That's how we prioritize what we, we can do. And where we think God is is leading us, so we we are starting with this whole love God thing, the, uh, worship, We're, because we found think and uh, we feel God God is saying if we if we are true to our worship, if we are truly worshiping and and worshiping Him and giving Him praise and all glory and honor, yeah, we can lament, but we're still going to give Him glory for even our laments. And we're going to come in and we're going to worship and worship is going to have meaning and it's going to change lives. You're not just going to say, great, great, great sermon, pastor. You're actually going to go out and you're going to live it. It's going to transform you. Right? Then everything we do will be multiplied. Right? And just because we're small does not mean we can make an, can't make an impact. That's what we believe. That's what we feel God is leading us to do. Right? This is not a, a what I feel we should do. Because if it was what I would do, no offense to all traditional people, I'd kill our traditional service. I really would. Not because I don't like it. There are times I absolutely love it. I love hymns. I love the wording of hymns. I love liturgy. I, I, if done right, liturgy is so powerful. But I find our 9 o'clock people are the ones that are just going through emotion. Worship is an activity like that you do on a, you know, like a sporting event instead of a way of life. Right? Our 1030 people are the seekers usually. They just are soaking it up. So that's just a personal thing. Sorry if I offended. Right? So when we're looking at these, these changes and we're talking about it, we're reinterpreting uh, past events. We want to show how they are congruent to the new vision. In other words, so we look back and we leap forward. We honor significant movements of God in, in the church and in the past days. And we leap forward in anticipation of these new opportunities that God has given. So we're not going to sit and talk about it. We're actually going to do it. We're not going to just dwell, well, we used to do this. Yeah, we can go there, but we're going to then... Leap forward and, okay, then how do we do it? We've actually brought back things that they used to do. Because we feel that's what God is leading us to do. And we're leaping forward. 
We're, we're not just going to, uh, we celebrate the, all those good things, but we're leaping forward. And, and so th- how do we do that? We are mobilizing support. Guess what? I have oh, two boards being formed. <laughs> being formed. No, thank goodness. <laughs> We we are we are we are now we, we we're not going to call them elders. We're calling them spiritual life team. Okay, and 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 so we we are actually forming that, and they're going to help me, you know, reach out to people that ha- are, have been been you know missing church for a while. That you know that they're going to actually do our some of my my care calls, um, you know, because I, I we I've got seven shut-ins, um, and and so I we're creating this. And they're excited about it. So we're going to mobilize the support so, we're going to, so that we can connect the needs and in the past with the future vision. So it, it, it's coming back down in, into this thing. How, do, how are we going to love God? Well, we're going to do this and we're going to do this together in, in, in this way so that we can connect the needs. I'm sorry, I'm going to keep moving, right? Because we know that growth of Crown of Life is a journey. It's not a destination. Think of your church. Growth in your church is a journey. It's not a destination. It's a journey, and it's a journey that you take together. It's a journey that you, you your boards, and, or your congregation, um, you're going to do together. It's not a destination. You know, don't get to some spot and say, well, we made it, we're done. It's a journey. Right? We get to a certain spot, guess what you're going to do? Keep going. Celebrate the success and then say, okay, God, what's next? Right? I had to learn how to do this. Because when we, we, we reached our, uh, uh, one of our, our, our goals, I went, phew, oh, glad it's over. And it actually took my, my council president to say in the council meeting, all right, pastor, what's next? <laughs> and I hadn't thought about it. Right? It, it, it's just a, a great way of looking at it. Church growth will happen as we pursue a greater purpose. And church growth is about making disciples. There's been numerous talks about this here. I sat in one earlier today. Absolutely fantastic. Church growth is about making disciples, not just adding numbers. It, it, you know, we, we, we talk about filling seats. We look at success as seats. But we're kingdom building, and that, that's a mindset we've had to change. Connecting people to Christ, the, the source of life, it's not connecting people to crown of life. It's connecting people to Christ, who is the source of life. So we, we're looking at, at church growth, right? Obviously, there's no clear target and size given in Scripture. Churches tend to talk about filling every seat, every pew. We should be on a journey of seeking and, and saving the lost. How awesome, how amazing is that? No clear target. And so we are following what we call an attraction model, right? And this is in our worship. This is just worship. That we're, you know, we're, we're in right now. We will follow this model also in, in connecting people, in connecting to each other. And we will follow the same model when we talk about doing stuff. How do we serve? Right? So, number one is belong. You, you cannot become what God wants you to be apart from any community. So we need to belong to each other. It, it's that whole idea. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Right? It, we're going to worship together. If, if you're hurting, I'm hurting. If, if there, there's celebration, we're, we're going to celebrate. When we are worshiping, we're, we're doing this all together. We are a community worshiping together. And, and, and so we want you to belong. So you can say, I, I, don't, I don't care if you say I'm a member of Crown Hill. I don't. I, 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 our, our council does. Um, my treasurer does because, they, they, you know, when they look at budgets. Um, but, but I don't. Because I, I want you to belong. I want, I want you to become what God wants you to be. Right? And, 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 and so it, whatever community you're part of, that's great. Then once you belong, then you, you become. And so we can become this, this deep church. We're going to be excited. We're never going to be lacking in zeal. We're going to be keeping our spiritual fervor. We're going to be serving Him in, in, in all that we do. So we want to be this deep church. We don't want to be a superficial church. So when we, you walk in, if you would walk into our church, hopefully, 
right? Hopefully you would walk in and, and you will feel like that, 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 that this is really meaning something. This is really truly who we are. This is something that we, we, we love, we cherish, we, and, and, and everything about what we do is all because of, uh, of Christ. Right, and, and then we want to bring, and so w- once we once we become all that, then we're like, who's next? So I, I I challenged my counsel, invite someone to come to church, and then I got that. Well, I did, but they already go to church, so I tried. I'm like, no, who's next? Who's the next? Maybe maybe it's the person um, at at the grocery store. Like I, like I said, I have a shut in who who is um. Right now, she, she is, she's in a um, um, memory care unit. So I visit her twice a week, and she has no idea I'm there. It's fine. <laughs> but the nurse who attends to her does. Right? He, he, she's not been to my church. She's not walked into our building. But I prayed with her. Who's next? It's kingdom building. Get, get off the numbers. It's kingdom building. I, I'm be, be sincere in love. I'm bringing her to, to Jesus. You can bring her to Jesus. You can bring those people to Jesus if you are sincere and then bless. Think of the blessing that's going to happen. Maybe not to me or, or what, but bless. Share, practice, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not, and do not curse. Just, just, just understand the blessings are going to be poured out. So, so we're working through this with, with just in our worship idea. So we, we, as we walk, kind of walk through, right? So, very quickly, changing small church image, okay? What do we offer community? Can't retreat. We've got to keep moving forward, right? Change the thoughts. We can never do that, right? Change the way we do, think and do evangelism. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a strange word. Um, we need to be intentional in reaching out to the lost people with the love of Christ. Bigger is not always better. Get over that. I, I know you want every seat filled. I know you would love to be a church of, of 500, 600, 700. But let me tell you something. That church down the road, the, 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 one of the largest churches in the LCMS, they have major problems too. I, and he, That pastor is my mentor. Hey, and he tells me his problems. They have people that are angry. They have people that are fighting. They have people that think they deserve things because they're members. They have budget issues. They have a lot of budget issues. Right? They, they have program issues. So it's the same 20, 20% doing 80% of the work. Right? They have a school. That's great. But then when you have a school, then you, you, now, now how do we make sure the school is funded properly? I mean, so they, they, they have the same problems as we do. Right? It's, it, it's just, we look at it as, an, oh, wouldn't it be nice? So, bigger is not always better. We have to have the means to evangelize to our community. How does your church fit that means? Right? I call it ministry of ones. Actually, I didn't coin the phrase. I don't remember who coined the phrase. It's called ministry of ones. Who's the one? Right? Evangelize to your community. Your church can evangelize to one. Because if you get one, just one, one person that, that understands the love of Jesus and what Jesus has done for them and, and, and that they, they're saved and they're a loved child because, because of, of what he's done. Hey, guess what? You know what? You're actually bigger. Because the kingdom of God is bigger. Right? That, that's, that's the mindset. Right? Programs are great. But programs don't always work. It, it, it's loving them that works. Yeah. Right, we have to change the way we think of how we do evangelism. Right? If you want to do evangelism, awesome. But look at the sense of mission, sense of urgency, and open fellowship. In, in other words, how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? I, 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 I got a grant, and I took um, 155 bunt cakes to the neighborhood next door. I, I knocked door to door right before Christmas. Bun cakes. How many of them came to church? Zero. Zero. But how many of them did I have a great conversation with? About 100. Right? About 100. Right? So it's, it's all worth it. Okay? Don't use programming as an excuse. 
Every church has a core value. Think of your church. Think of your core values. Think of the things that you can grow in. Think of the things that you, th- you, you right now, you, you, but you have to go back. You have to get everyone to buy in. You've got to have everyone to talk through it. But what are the things you do well? What do you have to do well? We do not do VBS. We, we just can't do it. Don't have the volunteers. Don't have the means. But gosh darn it, we do, we do one-week summer camps. We do two of them. Two one-week summer camps. 300 kids. 300 kids. I don't see their families. Right? But they're 300 kids. Right? Oh, I don't run it. Yeah, I don't run it at all. Oh, I don't do it. I, we, 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 because why? Because our core value and build on them is we have, we have a person that, that ran Cub Scouts, was a den leader in Cub Scouts. Right? Kids are now past that and, and, and they want to do it. So what did they do? They actually caught all the, the, the adults that were part of the den and they're running the, the summer camp with them. Isn't that awesome? So that, that's our core value. We know that we will probably never do a VBS, but we can do a summer camp. That's because you're using the gifts of your community. Yeah. What you're about. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're finding our, the values and building on them. We're not trying to, I'm not trying to be the other churches, every other church that does VBS. So do they do that at a different setting or they do that at your church? Um, we always start at our church and end at our church and they usually go somewhere else. Okay. Because I'm just not following what mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, but 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 we we don't we aren't doing VBS. Yeah, we aren't doing it's not called VBS. It was a one week when we started it. Then we had a waiting list, so we went to two weeks, and we're we're at two weeks. Uh, two weeks, we have three hundred kids. So. Yeah, when you change the name, I mean, everybody's used to sending their kid off to some camp. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it may not be the size or the, sh- uh, or the shape of the program as another church down the street in our community, and that's okay. We build on what we do and our vision and mission. We want to connect people to Christ. Everything we do is connecting people to Christ, who is the source of life. How do we bring life? And I'm up, up, sorry, I, 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 I've hit that moment. Okay, um, so um, let me get to that. So, because I, I want to give time for questions, answers, whatever. I can keep, I mean, I can, whatever. I can talk, I can talk for hours, right? Um, but where is our shift of focus? We, we understand that we cannot cause growth. We can only create a, a climate in which growth can take place. And, and as a small church, we get so caught up that we can't do this. I, I can't do this, I don't know how to do this, or, or my people will never want to do this. Well, well fine. You know, but, but this is that, that push along. Get, the, get them, get them to, to think. So, like, the things that we are doing, they're, they're, they're really, like, they think it's their idea. But, but we're pushing them along so that they, they understand that, like, we can do this and we can do this together. It may not be perfect year one. Or it may not even happen. Like, you know, how many of you do parents' night out? Okay? Yeah, we did parents' night out. First time, first time we tried it, how many kids? <laughs> Zero! But we didn't give up. Right? Be, be, because we, we created a climate, so wh- why wouldn't they come? Well, then we looked at the date, we looked at the times, we looked at really what we We found that our, our most successful parents' day out is, is not at night. We'd actually do it after church. So, guess then, guess who shows up for church? So now we have an opportunity to share the gospel, you, you know, create that climate, share the gospel with them. The, the kids are together. We, we purposely have the, the children's church and all that go, going on. So we created the climate to cause growth. Right? I don't know if, if, if that, that whole idea worked, but those that were coming to that, then to, to parents stay out, like, we got three of those families. I don't know if it was because of what we, you know, but we know that we changed the climate, so now we have the opportunity to share Jesus. Right? So we created that. Think of, think of your church and how do you, does your church work to create this? How can your church you know, work, work through it? Um, it, 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 is, it, is, it is how you focus. It is where you're focusing. 
um, is, is the key. I know you. most of this stuff is like, oh yeah, yeah, we, you get it. I know you get it. Yeah, but we're going to celebrate that. Right? Do you have any questions? Yeah. Get them from that? We don't. I'll, I'll be honest because if if one person come new person comes in, then s s some of the uh, excuse excuse my thought process or language here, right? Some of the old farts, they'll leave. So then you still have twenty percent. <laughs> yeah, so you you always will be that. You know, it, it, like like here, uh, look at look at this this event. Obviously, that this church like you see all these people running around, but this some of this is the same people that were here yesterday. I'm sure they'll be the same people that will be here tomorrow. Twenty percent doing eighty percent of the work, but it's the climate that they created. Look at the climate they've created. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Transfers, yes. Because of like 30 out of 40 people were transferred. Mm -hmm. uh, so your church is growing, but the kingdom is growing much more slowly. Yes. Why did people come to your church instead of coming? Um, I, I believe in two, two, two reasons. Okay. Number one, um, I don't do a lot of... If I do a sermon series, it's still scripturally based. I try not to preach fluff. Okay, so I'm, I'm always, there's always a, 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 scripturally, a scripture reference point to everything that we do. I think that, that could be number one. Um, number two is we love them. They, they feel like people. Most of them are coming from a larger congregations with, with thousands of people. And they're lost. We live in a community that in the last census was 35% Asian. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. um, those are the people that are going to expand the kingdom. Correct. So then, how, so how, how, how can you create a climate that's going to make them feel loved? Love by Christ. Well, yeah, but how are you going to create that climate? Love by, love by the congregation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we the simple thing. We did this. We I took away every round table. <laughs> right. There's no more round tables. We have now our, our, our time of community is square, a big square. So no matter where you sit, you're gonna see somebody else. All right? Since we have done that, right, we we went from basically 10, 15 people coming to to to, to, to fellowship time or what a coffee donut time to to Basically now, we we are we are running about fifty to sixty people. <laughs> so yeah, so and and then we also you have to walk through that place to leave. So we actually close the back doors of our church at at time of when service is done, and you are forced to walk through. We call it the gathering place, right? So and we and, and so we've created a climate in there, a climate of feeling like we, so we have couches, we have games for kids. Um, we yeah we have the, the square the, the tables all set up in a square so you can see everything. Um, but you 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 walk past coffee, um, our coffee bar. Um, so that that has hot yeah, it always has hot chocolate or tea I mean whatever so you can do that. Um, but then but then. We, we've we've really worked on trying to create that that climate. So it, they walk past where they can get news and notes. They walk past where, they, so we we've really tried to make it a warm feel, where they they feel like they're loved. They're part of our family. That that's that's what we've we've spent a lot of time on on creating the climate so that they feel loved. Right? Question. So our congregation is. We're 12 years old, but we're still at about 60. Uh -huh. And that's where we've been. And many of us say we want to grow, but I think also we're comfortable. Uh -huh. How do we 
Well, and, and, well, but then make, make sure, is, is that what God wants? Right? And, and, and here's, and so that's the same thing with ours. Yeah, oh, we would love to, you know, whatever. But, but then finally, we, we said talk is cheap, and I just did it. I, I just did it. I, I mean, okay, you said it. I'm doing it. I mean, I don't know if we know how to, mm-hmm. I mean, we all, wouldn't it be great if we had a hundred? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. But we're not... Um, uh, again, this is this is and I'll, I, this is what uh, I'll be very honest. We this is why I always say go back to climate. What kind of climate can you create? What kind of environment are you going to create? Because if your people in your congregation, and I'm sure you do a great job, if if they feel like they're community and loving, with their family church, okay, if, and, and that that. The, and, and, and they feel like they're, they're being loved and they're loved by others, they're going to in turn, if you teach them how to love the guests that come in, like those guests will return. And you have to model it. Before church, I do not, you know, where pastors usually go, they stand in a sacristy or whatever, I'm walking around. I, I, greet, I greet every member. I know who's sick. I know who's been in the hospital. I, I mean, that's the beauty thing of a small church. I love it. Yeah, I, I walk around and I greet them before church because I know after church I'm going to get, probably get stopped and have, oh, I need you, you know, whatever. But, but I, so I greet before church. And so I talk to them before the service and welcome them to worship and, 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 and you know, invite them to, personally invite them to communion, or whatever, you know, or, or ask them if there's something we can be praying for. Um, getting to know the names. So when they come up to communion, especially my guests, I call them by name, by do, meeting them before. Okay, um, share your hands before yours. Okay. Um, I see later on you had a slide about small groups. Yeah. Can you talk about that briefly? Yeah, we're in the midst of, of planning small groups. It, you know, right now we're looking at two, because that's the size we are. Um, and our ultimate goal is is to train our our those small group people be intentional on who they are. Um, and so that eventually, once it, our, our goal is in a year, um, our goal is in a year then is to have them trained well enough that they can, one of them, uh, can, they, can, they can split each other up. They can like split into, instead of two, we'll now have four. And, and so that we can, de- and then, so any new guest that joins our church or comes into our church, we in, in instantly incorporate them into a small group. So we're actually, get, we're really working on trying to get certain dynamics, age dynamics, family dynamics, so that the, the, it, there's a connection in that way. Um, I, and I, I, we call them small groups because that's what you all call, everyone knows them. I call them life groups because I, I build off our name, I build off our, our yeah. But um, Are so Bible study groups then? yeah, they're based on that yeah, but uh, yeah, and and yeah, and and so we have budgeted, we have budgeted um, each each group, small group, each yeah, um, uh, two hundred dollars for Bible study material and two hundred dollars to do a family event. I know some churches that have formed small groups. Uh-huh. People sometimes don't. Join yep. in my mind because they feel like they'll miss out on a week if they can't make it a week. So they do a thing where they just study uh, whatever the scripture reading right. is going to be for that Sunday coming up. That's fine. And they do a potluck or whatever. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah. I mean, that at least gets people yeah. together. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. But we, we've purposely put money in budget so that when we, we designate how we're going to, you know, the people leading and stuff. So we, we, we want them, and then we want them to do something. That's why we actually put money in budget for each small group to do something, you know. So it's not a, a hindrance to go because, oh, my gosh, that's, that's going to cost me 50 bucks. I don't have 50 bucks. Well, we're going to cover it for you. Yeah. Okay, right? question? Yeah. A few years ago, we noticed that people were coming home and leaving and never coming back. Uh-huh. That we were going to take a course. We literally took a course on how to how to welcome. Mm-hmm. And it it sounds kind of hokey, but it really made a difference. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. People who come into our church now, one of their comments is that you know we're we're loving. Uh huh. Be sincere. Lo- I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's more than one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but be yeah, be be very sincere. Don't don't be fake. They'll figure out fake. Yeah, um, and and that's the key. Yeah. It was it was a good course, and it was one of the few things that uh-huh. we did that was really intentional. Yeah, so that's why we we ask them to to always find a name, 
give me an address, get an address, write it down, but then find out about who they are. You ask them, ask them their story. Yeah, yeah, so. Oh yeah, and most people, I mean, most people aren't, aren't afraid to say, you know, um, they might not go into great detail, and, and nor should you go into, you know, but, um, but it gives you an opportunity to at least understand where they're coming from. So I'm going to, um, I'll answer your question. I'm going to do a prayer here because I know some people are taking off and stuff. So we're going to do pray. We're going to pray. We're going to boldly pray. Okay? And then if you want to talk, I'll, I'll, I'll stay right and talk with you for a little bit. Okay. All right. Heavenly Father, what a great day. Lord, it, it, it's a day that you've created. It's a day that you've made. We're all here. We rejoice. We, we celebrate you because of that. Lord, I thank you for every person here and, and, and their ministry and their context. Heavenly Father, I, I pray that you flood their hearts, flood their congregations, to just flood their place with the, with the Holy Spirit. So that there's, there's joy in serving, there's joy in things doing this. The, the frustrations, yeah, they're going to be there. But Heavenly Father, they can see the glory that's going to happen. They can see the blessings that will be taking place. They can see the opportunities of growing your kingdom. Lord, we, we, we pray for those, those people. We don't know who they are yet, but we pray for those people that will walk in our paths, that we can share you with the gospel, that we can be bold enough just to talk about you, the way, way we act, the way we smile, the way we, we, we hold ourselves up. Lord, it's all about you. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for each one of these people. Bless them, Lord, and give them strength. Give them peace. Lord, we, 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 we instill your name upon them. Together, as, a, as, a, as your church, we can instill the name. And that's why we can say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor give you his peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Have a great one. If, if you...